Am I the only one that didn't like the brand to brand invitational? Am I the only one? Probably. But, I'm just going to say this, real quick. In my opinion, Raw really ruined SmackDown today. Having Raw superstars appear, to me that really ruined the mood. The only superstars I was possibly okay with seeing was AJ Styles. Sure, I was... Sure, I was happy to see Sheamus, but, because I like Sheamus, of course, so of course. But, um, yeah, I really didn't like the Invitational. I really did not like that they had friggin' The Miz bringing his stench, as what Big E said, don't bring your raw stench over here to SmackDown. And that's exactly what Monday Night Raw did. Real, for real, this stupid cable. Stupid cable. It's bloody unplugging. Like, seriously, it's such a weak... It's such a weak piece of crap this thing is. Like, I, I just slightly tap my cable, and it'll just go, boop, it'll just come undone. So stupid, seriously. Anyway, enough about my cable. Yeah, I really didn't like the Invitational. Sure, we haven't seen it in a while. Like, the last time it was done, it was with Charlotte Flair back in May when she confronted Sasha Banks and Bailey. Sure, that was like a long time ago. But I still don't like the idea of just bringing superstars from Raw to SmackDown. It's not like SmackDown superstars came to Raw... And in my opinion, this brand-to-brand -brand thing, it really hurts the draft. Like, it just, it just ruins the effects of the draft. Like, why is it that they have to find a way to ruin the draft? Like, you do your draft, you, you kind of mix up the rosters a bit, kind of make it feel more refreshing and different, but yet you just continuously bring these superstars... To other shows, because you're like, oh, you know, we need something like this. Like, for some reason, this company feels like it needs this. It doesn't need the brand-to-brand -brand invitational. Either you learn to start using more of your talents that is on your actual roster, or get rid of the draft. you got freaking Lucha House Party running around on SmackDown. Not SmackDown, NXT, sorry. You got Lucha House Party running around on NXT and on Monday Night Raw. It's ridiculous. Buddy Murphy is, for some reason, teased that he could be going to NXT to challenge a Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight title. Don't know why, but he is. He should be involved in this whole Mysterio storyline with Corbin. But again, he's not. For some stupid reason. Anyway, SmackDown began with Daniel Bryan in the ring. This actually kind of felt refreshing. Because we always start off the shows with Roman Reigns. So, you know... Good on WWE to kind of not have Roman Reigns at the end. So, first SmackDown without Roman Reigns, you know, being in front of our TVs all the goddamn time. Look, as I said, I don't... Like I said, I like Roman Reigns more as a heel. But I'm just saying that I really just did not like the fact that he would start the show and he would end the show. To me, it felt refreshing to start off with someone... Start off with something completely different. So that felt refreshing to me. So we started with Daniel Bryan. He was talking about his training. Then out came AJ Styles. 
by 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 the means of the brand the brand invitational and then we get a match between them later on so we have Bianca Belair facing Bailey in a singles match on SmackDown and Bianca Belair got her win back from December yeah, Bianca Blair is so buried, isn't she? Don't you just love it when people say that a wrestler losing a match means they're buried and then they come back and they're still on TV? And with this win, I don't see Bianca Blair winning the Royal Rumble anymore. Look, I would have rather Bailey. Find a way to cheat again to beat Bianca Belair. Because then that would mean Bianca would actually have a chance to win the Rumble, not Bailey. So because of them having Bianca win, now some people, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, Bianca's a shoe in to win the Royal Rumble now. Technically, not really. Technically, no. I've said this all the time. The people who had the most momentum heading into a pay-per-view, they always lose. I've said this from the very beginning. The people that had the most momentum heading into a pay-per-view, I say they lose. They always lose. And Bianca won here. I don't think Bianca is going to win the Rumble now. My, I have to say my money would have to be on Bailey now. I'd have to say Bailey is a good chance to win the the Women's Royal Rumble, but I also kind of want Rhea Ripley, as what I said in my uh, predictions. And by the way, there was no Intercontinental title match that got announced for the Royal Rumble, so I know I said that was going to happen in my uh, predictions, but um, yeah, that's not going to count. So I did say if it happens, it will count. But Sasha versus Carmella is, so that will still count to my predictions but yeah I think Bianca is not going to win the Rumble now because of this victory I still think Rhea Ripley is a dark horse Bailey or Rhea are two people I think could be uh, could be on the road to victory here I just don't want it to be Alexa Bliss Alexa Bliss doesn't need the Royal Rumble then we had Miz and Morrison bringing their stench to SmackDown. Please get them off my TV. King Corbin battled uh, Dominic Mysterio again. Who gives a shit? I don't even know why Murphy is not involved in this whole thing. I'm going to continue to ask this question until I hear it. Where is Murphy? Why isn't he involved in this? He was the one that started this whole thing. Seriously, Ray? I thought you were going to give somebody a call. What happened to that call? Did that call get rejected? I don't really care much for Dominic Mysterio anymore. He's not really all that... He, he is talented. But I just don't really care. Sami Zayn wanted Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura to reunite with him. Shinsuke just told him to go to hell. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Sasha Banks and Reginald had a little segment together. And no Carmella. No attack. No nothing. It was just Sasha Banks talking about champagne... And that was pretty much it. And she was pretty much hitting on uh, Reginald, saying that uh, that she likes his uh, French voice. Listen, this was a very piss poor effort to put an end to the Sasha Carmella feud. This was a very piss poor effort from WWE. They, you, you mean to tell me you couldn't have Carmella? Just come from behind and whack Sasha with a champagne bottle? 
you had Reginald come in with a champagne bottle. Clearly this looked like an obvious trap. This clearly looked like an obvious trap where Carmel was going to come from behind and whack Sasha with like a champagne bottle or just whack her at whack her. But nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. This was a piss poor effort. They better not bump this to the pre-show. They better not bump Sasha versus Carmella to the pre-show because the way they treated this ending was pretty damn lazy. Sasha Banks should retain over Carmella. No ifs or buts about it. Roman and KO had a back and forth. That was a good promo. That was a very good segment between Roman and KO. I really do enjoy their segments. I really am looking forward to their last man standing match. I don't really have much to say. As I've been saying this for a while now between these two. These two have been having an awesome feud. They've been having a great feud. Both men have been looking great in this entire feud. I'm expecting Roman to retain and nothing more. And then we had, then we get to the part that ruined SmackDown. That was the main event. The main event was pretty damn awful. Brian defeated Styles by disqualification due to Sami Zayn interfering. We had Sami Zayn coming out and Big E coming out. Cesaro was at ringside. For some reason, Cesaro was against Shinsuke Nakamura for some reason. Brian Nakamura and Big E would defeat Styles, Cesaro, and Sami Zayn by disqualification. And then we get more shenanigans with The Miz and John Morrison coming out, turning it into a 10-man tag. And then Brian Nakamura, Sheamus, Big E, and Otis, who would join in the fray, and Sheamus would join in the fray to beat Styles, Cesaro, Sami Zayn, Miz, and Morrison. Do you see how... Do you see the garbage here? This was Monday Night Raw booking. This was Monday Night Raw written all over it. This is why I say Monday Night Raw ruined the show. Everything was going good. From the beginning, to the Bianca Bailey stuff, to, meh, didn't really care about Corbin and Dominic, the Roman KO stuff, Sasha and Reginald. All that was going good until this main event. Keep these Raw guys off of SmackDown and do not ruin this show again. This better be a one-off. This better be a one-and-done situation because of the because of the Royal Rumble. I do not want the draft being ruined because of this brand-to-brand -brand invitation. So that's really all I got to say about SmackDown, guys. Not a lot to say about this show. It was okay. It was a downgrade from what we've been getting a lot lately. It was definitely a, a bit, bit of a downgrade from what we normally get. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you all next time. And, uh, I'll be going back to university. So, before I go, I'll just quickly say I'm going back to university. And I am hoping to still review the Royal Rumble. No guarantees. I'll be missing probably about an hour of it. I've only got like a half day on Monday, so yeah, so I might be, so yeah, I'm going back to university and I will be uh, missing Raw, you know what, I'm okay with that because Raw sucks, but I'll definitely still review the shows with uh, my thoughts and opinions uh, when I get home from, from, from university from at this point on. So yeah, back to normal. Back to uh, my normal routine. Anyway, that's really all I gotta say, guys. That was my. That's really all I gotta say. Thank you all so much for joining me for this review. Hit that thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Give me your thoughts and opinions down below, and I will see you all next time.